back in the garage. All right, let's get this sucker up, get these wheels off and start playing with brakes. Good morning YouTube, well, we're back, um, we're going to go and work in a car today, I luckily had a job that was only 15 minutes up the road from where the car's kept at my old man's house, so I thought why not take the opportunity and go and spend some time in it. Um, in the last video we just started doing the brakes, we did the um, <laughs> did one of the front discs, so we're going to have a look at the rest of them, maybe uh, we'll paint them up, put the braided lines on, replace the rear drums and all that jazz, and we'll start looking at some other stuff, so here we go. Alright, skip the head a little bit. We've got the uh, new braided brake line in there. I've just wedged it up there to stop it leaking uh, fluid while we've got the caliper off. So we've got the caliper off here. It was all nice and stuck on there as everything is on this car it seems. I've got the one from the other side. So basically that's the standard rubber hose crappy old line. And these are the beautiful new ones that our friend Travis um, donated to us. So that's, uh, that clamps on that end, that goes onto the chassis. And it's even got this nice little plastic clip here, which uh, bolts onto the, uh, onto the suspension, which is pretty cool. But they're much, much nicer lines. Um, and these ones are bloody old man, they're 20 odd years old, so they're getting pretty haggard. I'm actually having a bit of trouble getting this bolt off, but we'll, uh, we'll get to that. And then we're gonna clean all this up, um, spray, uh, repaint it, and then I've got some of the EBC grease which will go into the um, into the pins here for the, the floating section of the caliper. And then we'll get it all back together and that will be our front brake done. There we go, I've got that sucker off. How much nicer are those new cables compared to the old ones? Much braking with our tiny little discs and drums. Get this painting done before these uh, storm comes. Check out them clouds. Anyone overseas, this is what it's like living in Melbourne. Sunshine in the morning and then this in the afternoon. Always recycle kids. I'm using the old boot cover, or spare wheel cover, as a, um, a painting platform so I don't stuff up Dad's uh, garage. I was going to paint outside, but uh, it just started raining, so we'll uh, we'll keep it in here. So I've um, I've masked everything up. I wide brushed all the crap off, cleaned it all off with wax and grease remover. Which, if you're ever painting anything, definitely wipe it down with that. It's fantastic. Um, I've got new bolts for this, so I've just put the old bolt in to use that basically as a masking blanker for now. And when we put the new bolt in, that'll uh, be all nice and fresh, so we'll give this a coat of paint, make it look all shiny, and then we'll uh, get on to other things. This coat's done, much shiny and blue. Very cool, it's a better colour than the engine cover, I reckon. I might um, use this paint to redo the engine cover later on, but uh, yeah, I can't be stuffed in that right now. Sorry about the noise, as predicted. It is raining pretty good now. Well, unfortunately, as suspected, my uh, gauge pod is way too big and will not fit in. It's it's massive, but I, I kind of had that thought anyway. So I'm going to um, redesign it, as I said, using a template. And we'll come back to that. That's no big deal. The, um, the vent here, the adapter for the heater. Oh, wow, it's dark under here. Hang on. Go good thing. Oh God, there we go. Um, it does fit, it's a little big, but I, I had no point of reference, but it fits out pretty good. So I think a bit of tape and a little bracket just to hold that on and that will actually sit pretty good. So I'm pretty stoked with that. So I got the back hub off. Um, thanks to watching a video from um, Chris Fix last night, who's an absolute legend on YouTube and tells us how to do all things with our cars. Um, the hub was, uh, so the drum was stuck on and I used these holes with a 12mm bolt to uh, push it off which worked really well. Um, the problem I've got now is these crappy lug nuts that I've got, um, one of them is almost round and these studs are actually longer than standard I'm pretty sure, I'm not too sure what the deal is but they they mean that they're sticking through and you can hardly get a purchase on these nuts so I'm going to get some, um, some better ones instead of these hex ones. I'm pretty sure I've got some in the garage at home so we'll see how they go. 
Anyway, we need to give this a good clean out and then we can start replacing all this. That was the first time I've had a drum breaker, but what a fiddle. These springs have nothing to grip onto. So. It's all good, I've got all the bits out now. I've given that a really good um, scrub up and a clean up in there. So we'll uh, get new parts in and lube it all up and put it back together. Well, if you can't upgrade stuff, you may as well make it look shiny. <laughs> How cool does that look? Put the EBC yellow stuff's in there. We've uh, cleaned everything up, got it painted. I've got the, um, I've got all the grease that was supplied, the high, high heat grease. We've got the backing plates on the back. They're actually, um, Sticky pads, so they stay on there. We've got the caliper all painted up, so we're just about to put some grease in the um, in the rubbers, and then we can connect up our new brake line. Giddy up. As always, nothing is quite as simple as it should be. I've got this all back together now. Um, got the braided line all in there. For some reason, it just was not sealing at the back of the caliper. Um, I think it was caught up on, there's an old holder for the old cable, and I think it was just jamming on that and not sitting straight. Um, I seem to have got it straight now and hopefully it's holding. Uh, I just changed over the cable at the back to the new braided line and that went in fairly easy because they're just um, basic screw on ones so that's fine. Um, now I can put this hub on, um, bleed both of them and just check because I need to adjust this. It's got the auto adjuster in there. I need to adjust this just to make sure it's, um, it's not dragging and all that business. We're getting there. And we're done for today. I know it, uh, it seemed like we didn't get much done today, but uh, it was only a few hours just after I finished my job. So we, this side of the car is done for brakes. But, uh, ooh, shiny blue new caliper in there behind our shitty wheels. Um, but they're pretty much bled. I'll probably wait till um, I've got somebody over and I'll, I'll have another go at bleeding them properly as I was doing it by leaning over with a stick. Um, New rear drums in there and all nice with the new cables. Um, gonna do something about these wheel nuts, but that's uh, just on the to-do list with everything else. I'm gonna go for a little drive around the court and see how it goes. That's gonna sit in there like that. Weld that sucker in and just play it up the side. We can put a bit of an angle on there. Put an angle on there, take those nuts out. And just put a plate in there, plate in there. Awesome, job's done. And have that coming back. That that can be as low as you want to. You've got to yep. decide how and how high or how low you want it. Yep. So maybe the answer is we can cut that out. Cut, 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 cut. Take that out. Okay. So cut it to yep. there. <coughs> try yep. it out. See try if it, it fits. Yep. Cut yep. it low if we need I'll to. Put that in. Sit the seat on it. Yep. And block up the back. But well, it's getting to the exciting stuff now. We're going to try and get this guy into the car. So uh, I've brought it over, and my old man, who's uh, very knowledgeable about uh, racing and, and fabrication, we uh, we just went through and made up a template of the base and where we're going to put it. So um, uh, we're going to basically decided to cut into this piece here, and we're going to weld some RHS between there down to the back. Um, it's going to be super strong. Um, obviously we're doing the passenger side because the driver's side's still in there. Uh, passenger side we can do something a little more basic because it'll just be there for drive days and just driving mates around the track. I won't be at full race pace. Um, but yeah, a bit of work, but it um, it should come along nicely. Um, my gauge pod is very close to fitting. It's just a little tight, but this has got a little lip on it, so I'm just going to trim the lip back. And that should fit in there nicely, which would be really cool. Next I've got my... Um, my adapters that I printed for the heat under here. So we'll see if they fit in a second. Yeah, it's always impossible to see under here, but uh, this adapter fits pretty well now. Just gonna make up a little bracket for it. Um, this one fits so good. It's pretty much bang on. It sits in there. Just gonna put a couple of screws in there and that'll be perfect. That's awesome, I didn't bring any venting down. Uh, any piping, but I'll bring that next time. Um, I've just got to go and get some grommets for these from Clark Rubber. I'm going to run the power cable for the battery through there, and I'll use that one for um, gauge uh, gauge cables to the engine bay, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, coming along nicely. Just filed that back a bit, and it is fitting in there really tight, nice and perfectly. I'll just put a couple of screws in there. It's not the nicest print I've done, but uh, oh, let me just put the camera down for a sec. 
gauge in there. I'm sitting over in the driver's seat. That is pretty bang on. Works a charm. So I'm just going to uh, screw it in and I'll print up the other one. Good go. Some, uh, some fiddly screwing in and that's the first adapter in it. Worked really well. Stoked. Now we're just going to get the one over there. Actually, it's going to light. So we've got connect that side to that side and we have our adapter here which isn't quite the right shape but a bit of a uh, couple of brackets there and that should hold it in place well we'll join together Speed. of course we've got um i've just put some locating screws in the back there I use a bit of paint to mark it out and i've got some holes in the back of the thing here so they just slot in that holds it there now i've got a little ghetto bracket it's not very pretty but um no one's going to see this, and that means that'll all fit together there. Screw that in, and now I'm just going to bring a bit of pipe next time I come. That is done. I've got the holes drilled. Not the quickest process, but I'm using this little L-shaped um, uh, screwdriver here because it's the only way I can kind of get to it. It's a bit slow, but um, it's uh, yeah, I can screw them in. I've got one there, and I've only put one in that side because it's actually really tight in there, um, and a pretty small screw so it doesn't go through the other side. Yeah, and then I've just got to drill some holes in the back of the uh, air vent tunnel here so I can drop the cables out for the gauges. But I reckon that is not going to go anywhere, that's pretty sweet. How good is it when things work, especially when uh, some Muppet like me designs them on CAD? So uh, yeah, those screws went fine with the little angled screwdriver. I've put a hole in the back, which we can see back there, um, which I'll be able to run the cables through for the gauges. And that hole pretty much leads straight down to that hole there, which will go out to the engine bay. So all i got to do now is uh, I'll jump on CAD tonight design up this one. It's not quite a mirror obviously because I want the gauge to point that way as that one does. It shouldn't be too bad and I also need to make sure these holes are offset so I'll put one on this side and two on that side. Um, although this I've only ended up putting two screws in this because it's in there super tight. Yeah, sweet! So the next project we're doing is figuring out this space here. So I still want to keep the heater controls. If I tuck them back for a minute I've made up this uh, CAD template, cardboard aided design. Thank you, Binky Project. Um, yeah, I've got to extend a little bit because I cut it too much, but something along those lines. And then I'll make up a template for the old uh, heater space, put that into the alloy. And the other thing I want to keep also is the hazard lights. Um, so I'm going to, because the switch already works, it's all it's all there. So I'll probably just cut a, um, a square out for that and place that somewhere in there. We've got all the space here, so probably you know, still heater controls here. We'll have a whole blank space down here, lots of space. Um, up here I do need the main power and ignition switch, which I have to have for regulations. And I want to have um, switches for turning gauge lights on and off, um, and for the, the taco. And um, yeah, I'll probably put the um, uh, the hazard light switch here somewhere and I'll still have space down here for other switches for other accessories or anything else I need to do. So one of the things I've actually been looking forward to because it uh, makes the car look a little more complete and a little more race car -y, is um, fixing up the inner door panels. So by regulations we have to have um, a covering on here. Uh, the stock covers are shitty plastic and actually pretty heavy for what they are. Um, even though it's covered in plastic these holes are a problem because if you're in a crash and rolling around you don't want your hand or anything to get caught in that as that's how we all lose hands. Um, so, I was a bit late today because I went and saw some guys and got these beautiful sheets of aluminium. So I know they're going to get scratched up eventually, but for now I'm going to put them on raw and if they end up looking shitty, I'll cover them in a, in a wrap. And basically, those panels I'll cut to size and will fit there, which looks really cool. Um, I'm going to use a, a piece of cardboard and cut up a, uh, a CAD template for there, basically just marking the shape and also marking the handle and the, the winder. Um, and because race car and we want to make things cool, I got these handles, our 1964 style, uh, which are actually handles, leather handles for guitar amps. I got them off eBay from China for like 10 bucks each, but they're super light. And they'll go there and that'll be the handle to close the door, which I think is pretty cool. And once again, eBay to the rescue. Instead of the old plastic ones, 
There's some nice alloy winders, which look um, pretty sweet. So as I said, if you're gonna make a race car, you may as well make it look cool. As cool as an XL can look. Now, I was thinking about how to attach this alloy there. I could pop rivet it, but number one, it's a pain to get off if um, I do want to get it off, and I don't particularly like pop rivets in general. I was thinking about um, making some more of these, like cutting, uh, drilling holes, filing them square, and then 3D printing some plastic plugs, which would work pretty well. However, I completely forgot that these things existed. So I went and bought a rivnut gun. So I'm sure a lot of you guys know what a rivnut gun is, but for the people that don't, these are rivnuts. They're like rivets. Focus. They're like rivets, but they've got threads in it. So you use the uh, gun like a rivet gun, drill a hole um, through the through the metal and um, basically put it in there, pop rivet it in, and then it leaves us with a thread there. The only problem with uh, rivet nuts is they can spin. However, there's not a lot of stress on this. It's just holding up an alloy panel. So I'll buy some uh, buy some more rivet nuts the right size, and then we can um, yeah we can put a a few rivet nuts along the way, and I'll put in um, a couple here for the handle so I've got a nice strong purchase on the handle and then yeah once we've cut that to size I've uh, got an alloy bit for the jigsaw so I'm gonna uh, jigsaw it from the back so I can scratch up the alloy and then um, mirror that for the driver's side and then, yeah we'll rip that in which will be really cool so that's going to be a project for the day very soon um, probably not today today is just a faffing day for getting little things done and I'll also cut up the panel for that and I've got a heap of alloy left, so I've got uh, one sheet for this door, one sheet for the driver's door, and then I've still got these two full-size sheets left here, which gives me a lot to work with. So that will probably be used for an airbox. So we get rid of all this. Obviously the battery's going in the boot. I'm just waiting to get a crimp up the right size, so I can relocate that in the boot, so that'll be a job for very soon. And then I want to make a nice alloy uh, airbox up here, which will sit in there. And uh, we'll do a custom air intake out the front with some proper piping. Um, yeah, so we'll have a lot of alloy left over for that, which is good. The whole sheet for all those four big pieces was only 60 bucks, so it's really cost effective. Um, and it's one mil thick, so it's, it's still really light, but it's got a bit of rigidity to it, so it's nice and strong. So yeah, pretty excited about that. So that'll be a project for very, very soon. All right, template time. So I've got some big sheets of paper. And I've stuck them up and I've pulled the, uh, the window winder off and now I've got to try and just mark around it and slowly trim it back to make it the right size. It's super easy. Ta-da! Not that bad. Trace down the edge. I've got, uh, I did a grey lead sketch of the handle. I've got that where the window winder is. And um, yeah, I'll cut that out and then I can just trim it up to make it nice and neat and use some straight lines. But that is pretty much going to be the door panel. And with any luck, it should mirror to the other side, because surely it's the same as mirrored, right? Surely. And that is us done for today, I reckon. We've got, um, we've got a lot of templates ready to go, so next time I think I'm going to do some uh, cutting of alloy and get these panels done, which will be really cool. Uh, get the handles on, and I'm going to get a crimper so we can get that battery relocated into the boot. Um, I'm going to put it just behind the passenger seat um, at the moment. And, uh, yeah, and then we can start working on... Uh, getting that seat bolted in the driver's side. A little bit of chopping, a bit of welding, which I'll get my old man to give me a hand with because I'm no good at welding. And it's somewhat a safety thing. And uh, yeah, so next video, we'll start doing some, uh, some fun stuff. When you think you've got enough uh, piping for your ventilation and you don't, you come up in your roof and you steal some. Yes, you look longer. So it's the next week, we're back. It's time to get some door skins happening, relocate the battery, do venting, center console, put the battery there, all sorts of fun things. We've got our template for our doors, so we're gonna get them cut out. First off, we will stick our vent that we stole out of the roof in there.
there we go. Pull in there nice and tight, connect to both ends, and we have a working heater without aircon. Yay! All the cables are still disconnected until I get this in properly. Now, next thing, we got ourselves a right hand vent. So let's gonna file that down, and then we should be able to get that in there nicely. Perfect. Nice, it's in. Bit of filing. But he's in there. Now we can screw it in. It's in there for good. Mate, success. It's not the fastest way to uh, put a screw in, but all I've got is these little recesses here. I've drilled some holes, and using this crazy little uh, hole shaped screwdriver, I can get the screws in. But it works, because it means there's no screws on the outside. It's nice and neat. Hold it in nice and tight. These are in. Oh, God, no. You saw that, right? That screw just went down the vent. Time to go get a magnet. See, I could edit this stuff out, but then again, that would be lying about what actually happens when you build a race car. Try that again. Let's mop it in. <coughs> that worked out pretty well. I haven't pushed them all the way in yet because I've still got to connect them up and they're a bit tight when I push them all the way in. I reckon that looks pretty cool from the driver's seat. I have full vision. Nice. Alright, time to cut these panels. So I've got it all marked out with the template. Time to trace that on and then we can cut it out. First door is pretty much cut, but using a jigsaw freaking sucks. You get these ratty edges where it grabs, so I think I'm going to ditch a jigsaw and try a grinderette and set on the other panel and see how it goes. I'm just going to cut the handle out and then I'll use a finisher and clean up the edge, but still it just bends it and grabs it, it looks shite, so try a grinderette instead. Alright, the door handles were a bit of a guess because I, uh, I kind of just did them by eye, but uh, now we've uh, got a bit more of a mark here, so I've just got to file these out and then we'll test fit again, see what happens. Oh boo, the time lapse camera died. So what we're up to is we've uh, I've mounted the I've got two rivet nuts in the top there and I've hung it, which gave me the chance to um, I've got the door handle and I've just got some marks here. So the door handle is going to go in these spots here, so it'll be really strong. Um, I've got screws all the way around the outside. Um, I'm going to drill this hole a little bigger in the door skin, and then I reckon it's all ready to go together. So I'm pretty excited. So I've just got to drill out the rest of these holes now. Um, 
clean them up and put some ribbon ups in it and then we'll have a crack, see what happens. So at the moment, um, because I'm using my phone to record, I can't listen to music. And I've got the local radio station on. It's great. It's great. Sweetest dream will never do. Cause I miss you, Bruce Willis. And I don't want to miss a thing. Come on, Armageddon was pretty good. In a really, really bad, terrible 90s movie way. As I've said before, I'm by no means a fabricator, but for some Muppet photographer, I reckon that has turned out pretty cool. So we've got the handle on there, which is we've nutted into the frame too, not just into the alloy. Got a little alloy window winders because, you know, a race car. And uh, yeah, I reckon that skin's turned out pretty good. So that's the uh, driver's side done. We've got the passenger's one here marked up, ready to be cut out. I'm gonna have a crack at cutting this with the um, uh, with the grinder wrap disc instead of uh, the jigsaw because the jigsaw is pretty shitty so I'll still have to cut these out of the jigsaw um, I'll use the Christmas tree bit on this Like that with the magic of editing, this door's done. So there's uh, there's no substitute for experience. The other door took me three odd hours, and this one took me under an hour because I had all the template ready to go. I'd done one, and I kind of knew what I was doing. Um, there's a few little bits that are a bit rough on it, but for what I want, it's going to be pretty good. Looks cool. Everything works, and it's within regulations. 
good times. And we're done. Cool, thanks for watching guys. I, um, I really appreciate the support. I've had um, a lot of people message me about, um, about this little build and uh, offer me advice and um, helping me with parts and all sorts of stuff. So it's, um, it's very much appreciated. I can't wait to get out on the racetrack, but uh, doing this stuff is half the fun. Um, if you haven't liked it already, please like the Facebook page, uh, facebook.com forward slash uh, The Nugget Project. And also if you can give me a like on YouTube, that's good. Um, there's a couple of companies that I want to get uh, support from and they base their stuff very much on social media. So how many followers you got, how many likes, all that sort of crap. So uh, all the likes and the comments and the follows on YouTube are much appreciated. Hopefully we can get some more stuff in this car very soon and get it on the road, on the track. Thanks for watching, we'll uh, see you next time.